वर्णिवेशरमणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्री हरि कृष्ण महाराज ने जय ऑलमाइटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड भगवान स्वामीनारायण और पूज्य गुरुजी पूज्य भगत जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिटी जय स्वामीनारायण आधारण स्वामी हेडिटन ए ग्लोरी ऑफ सर्विस ऑफ संत इन द हरिचरितम सागर सदगुरु आधारण स्वामी हेडिटन संत की सेवा करना जो मोक्ष पद से अधिक है सो यूं समझी सेवा कर जे ही अनादि मुक्त समझना ते ही अनादि मुक्त समझना ते ही इन दिस वे सदगुरु आधारण स्वामी हैड रिटर्न स्पेशल ग्लोरी फॉर द ड्यूटी हु परफॉर्मिंग मैनुअल सर्विस ऑफ संत स्वामी से अ ड्यूटी हु परफॉर्मिंग द सर्विस फॉर द संत इज इन फैक्ट अ वेरी पोजिशन ऑफ अ लिबरेटेड सॉल मीन्स द मुक्त Swami said, "We should understand the duty as anadi mukt, because not an ordinary person, an ordinary Jew, can attain the opportunity to have a service of sant." In the Vachanamrut, Bhagwan Swami Narayan also said that even Bhau Brahma. Mahesh means Brahma, Vishnu, and Shankar. They have also not even the darshan of such sant. So how can they attain the opportunity of serving the sant? So for us, as a devotee, as a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, we have an opportunity to for serving the sant. So we are. it is beyond our fortune that we have this an uh, this opportunity now there are so many things in service of sant first of all let me start to understand what is service exactly in the world without money nobody can attain any as even a person desire to eat something without money how can he eat if you want to spare some time in particular place like hotel or motel still you have had some money you have to pay something if you want to enjoy any movie if you want to enjoy a game in game parlor you have to spend some money and for a- acquiring money you have to some work you have to do some work or some job most of the people performing daily jobs they are working some working as a labor job some working as an officer but everybody have to do work in the office for earning money similarly in the spiritual world we have to do service we have to do work for sant for devotee to earn some
grace because without grace there is nothing is attainable in spiritual world if we want to remain happier in the spiritual world if we want to attain peace of mind in spiritual world if we want to attain a glimpse of maharaj while we are sitting in meditation in all situation we have to need a grace of sant because without as in the world without money we cannot do anything similarly without the grace of sant in the spiritual world we have no other way to live in spiritual world no doubt we can survive in the spiritual spiritual world in the religion but what is the real life what is the real happiness in the spiritual world we cannot have without grace of sant and for attaining grace attaining rajipo we have to do service of sant there are many kinds of service just as in the world there are many kinds of jobs same thing in the spiritual world there are many kinds of spiritual jobs most of job worker desire to have a government job a permanent government job why because in most government job they cover insurance and also provide some other facilities similarly in the spiritual world when we serve sant a true sant of bhagwan swami narayan he also provides us insurance insurance against i mean insurance for not affecting by bad means vices or bad natures bad company this is what our insurance in spiritual world if we are so we are so we are providing our service we are doing service we are doing work in company of sant for the sant at the time we have an insurance so that even though we have damage by heart by lust anger arise ego or by any other our inner enemies but just as in the world we have insurance and we have no intention similarly if we have insurance in the form of service of sant means if we have grace of sant by serving him that is our insurance so we have no tension about lust anger or ego or any kind of inner enemies they cannot do they cannot adversely affect in our mind or in our heart because we have a sant but this is not easy to attain service of god service of sant service of devotee as we have earlier said let we listen what maharaj says in the 59th which now we got the last chapter uh, got the second chapter maharaj says only those who have accumulated a great number of merits from performing good deeds receive the opportunity to serve god's sant but those who have a few merits do not bhagwan swami narayan himself says in the vachanamrut that not an ordinary devotee a devotee who had attained a uh, good merits from his past lives only such devotee can attain the opportunity of serving the sant just in stuff back for some time for one's own life as today we all have an opportunity to serve the sant and we are serving the sant so 
it is definitely we have some good merits some good deeds we have performed in past lives so that today we have an opportunity to serving the sun but now as we have attained the opportunity to serving the sun just introspect and just observe our own life really we performing the service of sun or not or we are just mechanically mechanically performing the work because without understanding glory of god's sun if we perform any deed any work for sun that is not more beneficial that is not perfect service no doubt that is service but that will not perfect service that will not give us the exact result otherwise if we without knowing or with the knowledge when we eat some sweet no doubt a person is not aware of the ingredients of the sweet but still the sugar in the sweet so a person can feel a sweet means he can enjoy but if a person who knows that this is a particular sweet this much in ingredients in the sweet and how much proteins how much vitamins one can have so he can enjoy more than that person who is unaware of the ingredients and all other things similarly if we realize the glory of sun and then after if we performing the service of sun that will more beneficial for our own self once upon a time after departure of bhagwan swami narayan there are so many saints in the swami narayan sect once bhayatman and swami he was very old in age and so due to old age he ha- he become sick and so there are so many devotees and there are so many saints who also desire to serve the sir swami bhayatman and swami but out of many devotees a devotee in the worldly manner if we so if if we observe forget he is the devotee but just observe on perspective of worldly manner he is a wealthy person he is the top most business, businessman at the time sivlal said son of bagadosi he had got an opportunity by taking an opportunity he direct forget all his thing and reach to so swami and for so many times long period of time for month or two with the understanding of real glory of atman and swami sivlar had performed service of bhayatman and swami he used to wash swami's clothes he used to do he he used to give bath to a swami he used to wash his bed sheet and all other preparings and he provides swami some medicines and all other things after a large day when swami desired to go in aksardham at that day swami asked sivlal sivlal you have performed my service for so many long times 
even though you, as a businessman you have so many work but still you have spent your time your money your mind everything for me for my service so now if you have any desire in your mind please ask me then sivlal said no swami i do not require anything i have no any desire then swami again asked him please ask anything in this universe there is nothing there is no anything that i cannot give you from entire universe i can give everything to you please ask sivlal say sivlal says no swami i have no desire for anything but after when swami repeat the same thing for twice thrice then sivlal said swami if you please with me please bring me to aksardham please come with maharaj after your 30th day of departure and after 13th day bhayatman and swami came with maharaj to bring sivlal in aksardham this is what the result of serving the son but the main point is that sivlal said is not an ordinary person he had everything he has all comforts and luxuries because he was one of the mo- one of the most wealthier person but as he understand the glory of sant he realizes what the result of serving the sun and with understanding of glory if we have performed the service of sun then he'll get aksardham our goal is also to go in aksardham there are so many other ways to attain god realization but the most easiest way to attain bhagwan swami narayan and his aksardham the eternal bliss eternal happiness even while living on this earth and after death we have the easiest way to serving the sun not only this not only sivlal said had performed the service of sant but bhagwan swami narayan himself had also performing service of sant in the vachanamrut of grada vachanamrut 10th of grada first chapter sri ji maharaj himself narrated his own story while he was traveling in the southern india and he encounter a sadhu by the name of sevakram and when the sadhu become ill fell ill and there is no condition the sadhu can walk at the time bhagwan himself had performed manual service for that sadhu not only this but after coming in satsang as a nilkantharani he had performing service for sevakram and many other sadhus in the jungle but after coming in satsang while bhagwan swaminarayan live in lodge at the time he used to do every work for sadhu he used to cook for sadhu if any sadhu fell ill he always pressing his head pressing his legs and give him some medicines also wash sadhu's clothes clean all the ashrams go for begging some food some grains in the town this is what his daily work by his own nature by his own incident bhagwan himself 
want to preach us how to do service of sant and bhagwan himself want to say to us that if bhagwan himself he had no need to do this work but still if bhagwan himself performing the service of sadhu then a devotee must perform the service of sadhu because there is no other way there is no other way to attain dharma attain gyan attain vairag attain bhakti if we want to attain such divine attributes in our own self we have to perform manual service of sant another incident there is one brahmachari santanand santanand brahmachari was a disciple of achintyanand brahmachari and achintyanand brahmachari was a disciple of gunadithanand swami santanand brahmachari he was by very little age he joined swami narayan fellowship and become a disciple of achintyanand brahmachari he had an opportunity to learn some sanskrit some scriptures so that he can preach the devotees but avoiding all the other ideas he only concentrated his mind to serve his guru achintyanand varani he had whole the life only performing service of his guru achintyanand varani but not concentrate in study because he used he used to pass all his time to service of his guru but when the time is come the time of departure of achintyanand varani at that time santanand varani said guru maharaj i have no any worldly sense i have no any knowledge of scriptures i have no any knowledge of grammar or sanskrit or language so now from the first day to till today i have passed my time to serve you now you are ready to go in aksardham but what for me how can i survive in this world without you at the time achintyan varni say forget all the things even though you are not learn learned the sanskrit or any other scriptures but still you become a great preacher and due to the ashirwad means due to the grace of achintyan varni santanand brahmachari become a perfect and well known preacher after achintyanand varani even though he had no knowledge of any scriptures but still according to grace of a sant he had attained everything in life similarly if we want to attain even glimpse of bhagwan swami narayan even eternal bliss of aksardham we have only a single way we have only this one way and that is to attain grace of sant and to attain grace of sant we have to perform service for the sant in the siksha patri bhagwan swami narayan has written that seva muktis ch gamyatam means performing service of god and his sant in the abad aksardham that is the real definition of mukti means celebration now we already have attained company of sant a com- company of true sant now it is in our own side to perform service of the sant 
in the vachanamrut the fifth vachanamrut of vartal chapter sri ji maharaj himself written he himself says that if a person if one also performing with extreme affection such similar service of god and the sant who possesses the highest qualities even if he is a devotee of the lowest type and was destined to become a devotee of the highest type after two lives or after four lives or after 10 lives or after 100 lives he will become a devotee of the highest caliber in this very life such are the fruits of the similar service of god and god's bhakt if we are not a devotee who had attained a spiritual elevated higher spiritual state and if we want to attain that higher spiritual state in which there is no distance between us and god if we want to attain that state we have only remedy we have only way and that is to performing the service of sant now in last let we recite again what our guru adanand swami had written in haricharitam sagar the glory of service of sant sant ki seva karna jo moksh pad se adhik hai so यूँ समझी सेवा कर जे ही अनादि मुक्त समझना ते ही अनादि मुक्त समझना ते ही हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे नजर समी पे रहो अमारिये हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जे घनश्याम महाराज स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय Today, I come with a vat from Sadguru Gunatitan Swami. <clears throat> Swami first starts out with an example. Swami gives an example by stating, there's a king who asked for a bundle of arrows and he called his strongest soldier over and told him, here, break the bundle of arrows. The strongest soldier was confident and very egotistical that he would be able to break the bundle. So, by force, he tried to break it, but nothing happened. Then he used his intelligence and he tried to break it with something else, yet it couldn't be broken. So after trying and trying, the soldier gave up and gave it back to the king and told him that i've failed you again the king gave it to one of his other soldiers who was a little weaker but this soldier had intelligence 
So instead of trying to break the whole bundle itself, he untied the bundle and took one arrow at a time and snapped the arrows in half, one by one, breaking the whole bundle itself without any kind of strength even needed. Off of this example, the king, he told him, his soldiers, that when all of you stay united, you would be like this bundle that can never be broken by any kind of other force. But if you become separate, then you would be able to, you would be broken. In a similar fashion, Gunatin Swami uses as an example the principle behind what he's stating is that if one stays in unity, all the saints, devotees, brahmacharis, if they stay in unity, then no internal or external enemies will be able to defeat oneself. But if one breaks off from the bundle, if one separates, then one would easily be broken. So today, our topic is Samb, also known as unity. An unknown person once said, there's more power in unity than in division. And this example of Sadhguru Gunatina and Swami perfectly proves this statement. Now, according to the dictionary, unity means the state or quality of being one. Oneness, you can say, is unity. The state or quality, meaning it's a certain kind of state to stay in one position altogether, or it's also a quality. Now, <clears throat> before we go deeper in, just like to give you a small example. There was a grandfather who was on his deathbed. He was very ill, <clears throat> and he was lying on bed. He had four sons, but all his sons kept fighting with each other. They were never, ever at oneness or with unity together. So one day, the grandfather called all of his four sons to, to his bed. And what he did <clears throat> was he gave the son a bundle of sticks, just like how the king gave a bundle of arrows. The grandfather gave a bundle of sticks to his sons, and he told his sons to try to break this. So first and foremost, he handed it to his old, eldest son, and he tried and tried, but it didn't break. Then again, the eldest son passed it on to the next brother of his, and he tried. Nothing happened. The third brother, nothing happened. And finally, the smallest brother, what he did was just like how the weakest soldier separated the bundle of arrows. The boy also separated the bundle of sticks and broke the sticks one by one. The grandfather gave a similar and message to the king just like that. He said that you do not understand what just happened. It seems to be easy to try to break one bundle, but it's harder than you think. But if you separate the bundle, it's easy. In the same way, if you stay united, this fighting, this bickering would not happen. But since you feel or since you are separate, that's why all this commotion is happening. So the grandfather proved his point and told all his sons to stay united. Now, the example of unity, there's many examples. But more than that, we see that in the world, an arrow versus a bundle of arrow. A single water drop versus a waterfall. A string versus a rope. 
a flock of geese versus one geese, one ant versus a whole army of ants. These analogies are used to demonstrate the nature of unity. But obviously, we are probably have experienced that together is stronger than just one single person. Just imagine this temple. If we were going to hold this grand festival, which is coming up in about 45 days, if all the responsibilities were given to just one person and nothing else was given to him, no resources, no help, it would not happen. The festival would not even go on. It would not even in any way start. But since there's many, many saints involved, devotees involved, a lot of effort, you can see the progress that's happening. And in 45 days, the, fe the festival will be executed according to plan and according to Bhagwan's wish. So that's a part of unity. As you can see, we've, you need unity in everything. Even let's go back 85 years, when Great Britain had control over India. At that time, Mahatma Gandhi was at his prime, a freedom fighter for his country, without any kind of desire, a selfless motive to try to free his country. Mahatma Gandhi, such a striking figure, but at that time, the British, what they did was since they were ruling India, they put an act called the SALT Act over India. Meaning the SALT Act was it prohibited collecting or selling salt to any other country for India. Meaning no sell, salt can come in, no salt can go out. <clears throat> Without salt, how can one really survive, you can say? Just imagine if a whole buffet of food was made. There was about over 50 items, but nothing had salt in it. No one would have a desire to eat it. Even the hungriest man, after some time, he would think that I have eaten nothing because salt is such a critical part of dietary supplements. So, Great Britain put this restriction on India where they could not sell or they could not collect salt. So Mahatma Gandhi, what he did was he started a march. It was called the St Salt March. On March 12, 1930, he started this march. And he started at the beginning of the Sabarmati River. And his end location was Dandi by the Arabian Sea. The distance was about 240 miles. So when Mahatma Gandhi started his march, there was only 10 or 15 devotees with him, his followers, you can say, or people who were also with his flow. About in the month of April 5th, he had not reached the Arabian Sea yet. The reason why he was marching to the Arabian Sea was to get salt from there because there was, the Arabian Sea is a salty water sea, so he could collect salt from there. So that's why he was going there, marching. At first, only about 15 maximum followers who were going with him on the march. In about a month, less than a month, he started on March 12th, 1930. April 5th, 1930, meaning less than a month, 10,000 people had joined this march. In India, this actually happened. Mahatma Gandhi, while he was walking, he preached that these great, these British have prohibited salt. Now please help me to take this prohibition out. So, at that time, many, many people 
were obviously against the British rule because of this cruel act. So they joined Mahatma Gandhi's flow, but just not one or two, but 10,000 people in less than a month had joined this march. And finally, when Mahatma Gandhi reached the Arabian Sea, he, collect, he did collect the salt. But moreover, the British had an eye and saw what Mahatma Gandhi had done. So after this, they lifted the act. Due to Mahatma Gandhi's non-violent movement, but what does this show? Unity. If there was only 15 people with Mahatma Gandhi from the beginning till the end, when he reached the Arabian Sea, then the British would not even have seen this. They would have just saw that Mahatma Gandhi visited the Arabian Sea. But when thousands and thousands of people joined the march, over 10,000 people joined the march, then the British, the British's eyes opened up. It said, wow, what kind of unity is this? And due to that, they had to remove the act. And due to one of these acts, this is just one act that Mahatma Gandhi did. After 17 years, in 1947, India got its independence from Great Britain through Mahatma Gandhi's great, great efforts and nonviolent movements. But what did Mahatma Gandhi have? Number one, faith. And number two, unity. He had everyone. He had the whole India with him, you can say. And through that, through that, he was able to uplift. But if he just had said that I would be able to remove these acts or I would be able to do everything on my own, it was not possible. So unity goes a long way. Even if one cannot see the results in the beginning, you can see right now the United States Army. They're unison. They're at one. Everything they do is in one formation. And due to that, the United States is a superpower. Due to that, the United States Army is the strongest army you can say in the world because of its unity. So this may seem like a small, you can say, subject or you can say a small word, but it's very powerful and it can do a lot of damage. But it all depends on how united you are, you can say. Unity can also go in the wrong fashion, whereas you are united, but your direction is not right. So the positives of unity are that you can do many, many things in a short period of time or with less effort because you have many people. But the negative of unity is that if you have many, many people together, but if you are not in the right direction, if you are focused on a negative task, just like you can see uh, Adolf Hitler in World War II, he had many, many people, but he was completely against, you can say, civil rights. He was completely against everyone. He hated the world. And due to that, he killed many, many in innocent Jewish people. So this is an example of how unity is not good. But on a spiritual perspective, what we're really looking for is that when we have the unity of these saints, of these devotees, then we'd be able to conquer the internal enemies, such as lust, anger, greed, etc. And also the external enemies or people who have bad influence on you or anyone around you. And from that, one can stay or one can be safe from the illusion of Maya. So, saying this, unity is probably the greatest asset to have if one is trying to 
achieve God because it helps one because there's kind of like if you're riding a tricycle a tricycle has two training wheels on the back of it so even if the person or even if the child is new at riding the bike there's still those two training wheels in the back so that the bike doesn't fall over those two training wheels are in the form of unity and when their balance is perfectly kept then those training wheels can come off and one can finally unite with god but in order for those training wheels to come out one first has to become united and use those training wheels when needed so in your school at your home with your family or at your mandir with your peers and devotees become united with them if you have to let go of something if you have to compromise compromise but stay at one so through that one will be able to achieve bhagwan and one will be able to please bhagwan and his great saint saying this my humble jai swami narayan shri patim shri dharam sarva deveshwaram bhakti dharam atmanam vasudevam hare madavam kesavam ramadam karanam swami narayan nilakantham bhaje hari krishna maharaj ni jay